So for the sample problem, so is there a significant difference in the pre-test and the post-test? And for the null hypothesis, there is no significant difference. Then for the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference. So from this table, so these are the scores in the pre-test and the scores in the post-test. So for this column, we need to find the difference between the two score. So we just need to subtract. So 25 minus 27, that's negative 2. 35 minus 33, that's positive 2. 27 minus 33, this one is negative 6. Then 31 minus 35, that's negative 4. 26 minus 25, that's positive 1. 24 minus 25, that's negative 1. 25 minus 27, this is negative 2. 27 minus 25, that's positive 2. Then 23 minus 27, so this is negative 4. And 30 minus 33, so this is negative 3. Then we need to find the summation of the difference. So just add all these numbers. So we have negative 2, then plus 2 plus negative 6, plus negative 4, plus 1, then plus negative 1, plus negative 2, plus positive 2, plus negative 4, then plus negative 3. So equal, so the sum of the numbers or the sum of the difference is negative 17. Then we need to find the average or the mean of this difference. So from the sum of the difference, that's negative 17. Divide by the sample size. So since we have these 10 samples, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So divide by 10 to find the average. So therefore the average of the difference is negative 1.7 then for this column so we need to find the square of the difference so the square of 2 this one is 2 times 2 this one is positive 4 the square of 2 is positive 4 the square of 6 so that's 6 times 6 this one is 36 the square of 4 this one is 16 the square of 1 so 1 times 1 that's 1 this is also equal to 1. The square of 2, that's 4. The square of 2 is 4. The square of negative 4, that's positive 16. The square of negative 3, that's positive 9. Then we need to find the sum of the square of the difference. So again, just add all these numbers. So we have 4 plus 4 plus 36, plus 16, plus 1, plus 1, then plus 4, plus 4, plus 16, then plus 9. So the sum of the square of the difference is positive 95. So this time, using now this table, so we can find out the sum of the squares of the difference so using this formula, then substitute now all the values. So for this, the summation of the difference or the square of the difference. So we have this, the sum of the square of the difference. This one is 95. Then minus the sum of the difference. That's negative 17. Then to the power 2, then for n, the sample size. So since we have this 10 samples, so therefore divide by 10. Then to simplify, so this is 95, then minus. So this negative 17 to the power 2, divide by 10. 
So we have negative 17, then to the power 2, divide by 10. So this is equal to 28.9. Then to find out the sum of the square of the difference, so we have 95 minus 28.9. So this is equal to 66.1. So after solving the sum of the squares of the difference, so we can find now uh, the T statistics and using this formula. So again, substitute now all the values. So for this, the mean of the difference, so this is now the value that's negative 1.7 then minus for the mu of d this is equal to 0 then we have this the sum of the square of the difference that's 66.1 then over the sample size that's 10 then times 10 minus 1 then to simplify, so this is equal to negative 1.7. Then over the square root of 66.1. Then this 10 minus 1, this is 9. And 10 times 9, so this one is 90. Then we have now t equals negative 1.7. Then over, so for the square root of 66.1 over 90. So we have the square root, then open parenthesis, 66.1 divide by 90, then close parenthesis. So that is 0 0.86. So 0 0.86, then to find now the value, or to find now the t value, so this negative 1.7 divide by 0 0.86. So we have negative 1.7 divided by 0 0.86 equals, so the t value is negative 1.98. So since we have now this t value, so we can find now the critical value, but first we need to solve for the degrees of freedom using this formula that n minus 1 so since n is 10 because we have these 10 samples so we have 10 minus 1 so therefore the degrees of freedom is 9 then for the alpha value this is 0 0.05 so we can find now the critical value using this degrees of freedom and the alpha value from this table so we're going to use the two-tailed test because this one has no direction and from this table so the degrees of freedom is 9 then the alpha value is 0 0.05 then you connect so therefore the critical value is 2.262 but since our t value is negative so therefore we're going to use the leaf tail so this critical value becomes negative 2.262 then for the interpretation so since from the normal curve this one is the acceptance region this one is the rejection region so these are the critical values the negative 2.2 and the positive 2.262 then from our t value since our t value is inside the acceptance region therefore we need to accept the null hypothesis so since we accept the null hypothesis so for the interpretation therefore there is no significant difference in the scores of pre-tests and post-tests.